Before we begin a time of worship, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for 10 years of the youth camp ministry. Thank you that we are able to learn truth from your word. And Father, even as we go into a time of worship this evening, Father, I pray and ask that you please be with us and may you help us to listen and may you help us to receive your word that it may fall on good ground. Father, pray and ask that this time of worship would be acceptable in your sight. And Father, I pray and ask that you please be with us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm currently studying um, at Curtin as a physiotherapist. I'm currently studying at Curtin as a physiotherapist. And as a physiotherapist, I do have to study um, human anatomy, so basically the human body. And as a part of this, I do have to view dead bodies um, to study how it actually looks like under the skin. You know, at first I was very disturbed at the fact that I would have to look at someone else's body, so what, what's inside someone else's body as well. And, you know, but this change, um, this, from being disturbed to being fascinated about the human body, I will show you a few examples of um, not the human body. Not <laughs> <laughs> I will not show. <laughs> no, I'll show you illustrations of um, what we can see. It's not graphic. There's no need for viewer discretion. <laughs> but basically, an example of the lecture slides that um, and what is actually below the human skin. So if you can see here, not too bad, right? <laughs> Well, if you can see, it's really fascinating what is under the skin. So the, the one on the right is actually a, a human arm. So from here to about there. And if you can see just from here to there, if you could count, there's more than 20 structures that you can actually label. And another example is this. So this is actually the base of your foot. And there are so many things. And it's truly amazing what the Lord has created us to be. But one thing that truly amazes me the most is the human brain. Even though it's just something so small that's in your head, there are so many compartments and each one has its own specific function. And this is just a very, very simple diagram of what actually goes on in the brain. But greater than all this really is that the Lord created us. And he created us out of love, you know. God is a God that's truly worthy of praise. Not only did he create us, but he created the world that is around us so that we can appreciate it. You know, God could have made us like simple organisms, you know, like stickmen, or he could have just made the world black and white. And, you know, we really would have never known. I want to respond in thanksgiving to God that he has wonderfully created us and the world that is around us. The first song that we're going to sing today is Creation Sings the Father's Song. The first song that we're going to sing is about creation, as from the title. And, but truly, tr creation points us back to God, the Creator God. And it is in Him that all things are controlled, from where the sun rises to when it sets. It is all in God's plan. But greater than the creation truly is the Lord's salvation plan for us. Without Him, we will not have this salvation plan. And this salvation plan was from the beginning, even before creation. May we give praise to our Creator and may we truly sing in thanksgiving of God. Let us sing our first song. Thank you for singing our first song. You know, this youth camp has really been a camp that has helped me to see the state of faith that I'm in. If I were to be honest with everyone here, I see the, I see the, young, the rich young ruler in myself, not literally meaning that I'm a piece of stationery or, <laughs> or that I'm rich or that I'm a ruler somewhere far, far away, but truly the state that he had, state of faith that he had. I had deceived myself into thinking that I knew that I had faith, 
you know, I knew that I had sin in my life and that I was dealing with them. But the word that Pastor Chris gave on Tuesday morning made me realize how wrong I was. You know, truly the word of God is like a mirror. And only if we look at it in detail, will we be able to see what is the state of our hearts. Without the word of God, I would not have realized how wrong I have been all this while. The rich young ruler had everything going well for him. He was rich. He had everything that the world wanted, power, status. And he had sincerity in a way that he approached the Lord Jesus. He knelt down before him. He said good things. But at the end of, at the end of it all, his faith was not similar to the Lord's. He did not have this common faith which we can have in the Lord Jesus. I was the same. I thought that I was going well. You know, recently joining the YPG committee, chairing at Sunday worship, singing in the choir, being part of the AVA team, helping out in the kitchen, and washing and cleaning wherever I could. I thought that I was right with God. I thought that I had faith. But how wrong I was. For true faith is really one that has no wickedness, has no filthiness, and is all laid aside. Just that the word, the implanted word of God, can be in our hearts. And it's only then that we truly can say that we have this undefiled religion, which is Christianity. Shame, I have brought shame once again to the Lord. I call myself a Christian and I serve, and yet I am still filthy and wicked. The Christianity that I practiced was truly useless, for it was filthy and wicked. But I really, truly thank God that my eyes have been opened once again to see the things that are wrong to see the things that are wrong in my life and the things that I'm practicing and how I've taken this faith for granted. You know, though there is correction and though there is correction that has to be done, all hope is not lost. For truly, with God, everything is, nothing truly is impossible. One thing that I appreciate from the story of the rich young ruler is that even though he did not have the right faith. He did not have a right understanding of faith. The Lord still loved him. Though he was wrong, though I was wrong, the, still, the Lord still lovingly corrects. In Ephesians 3, verses 17 to 19, the love of the Lord Jesus is described as immeasurable and it surpasses knowledge. You know, we will never know how deep, how wide, how long the love of Christ is. But I want to respond in thanksgiving that we truly have this love that corrects. It amazes me how there is love and correction at the same time. You know, unlike the rich young ruler, I want to respond to the correction that has been given. I want to seek and I want to share in this faith that we have that we can have in the Lord Jesus. The next song that we're going to sing is Your Love Amazes Me. And I can relate to the first verse of this song. You know, there have been people who have complimented me in the way that I serve, in the way that I give off myself. But at the end of the day, without faith, all these things are useless. But there is hope that it through the love of the Lord, we are able to sing in thanksgiving to the God, to God because He is great and full of love. And He corrects us whenever we go astray. May we sing our second song in thanksgiving to God who is truly amazing, full of love. Let us sing. Thank you for singing our second song and I apologize that I'm not actually leading you in worship because... Truly, the, Lord, the love of God is great. You know, the love of God, the love of the Lord Jesus is special. And we need to have 
the love of the Lord Jesus in our lives. Only the Lord can save us. Only the Lord can help us to see the things that are wrong in our lives. The only way that we are able to do this is if we seek to have a relationship with God and have the Word of God implanted in our lives. Just as a seed is planted into the ground, the first sign that the seed is alive is when roots start to grow. And these roots will cling to the ground and provide the plant with a strong foundation. Only when the roots have been well formed will there be anything visible above the ground or will there be any growth. This is similar to faith. Only when we have been rooted and grounded in the Word of God would we be able to stand against the storms of life and the sins that can trap us and snatch us away. It is only when the Word of God is implanted deep in our hearts that we will be able to lead lives of faith. Even as the Word of God is given later, I want to make sure that I am listening and I am receiving. This must be done so that I would be able to have this implanted Word of God in my life, that I would be able to have this common faith of the Lord Jesus. You know, it's only by the grace, mercy and love of God that we are able to have faith in the Lord Jesus. You know, as we learn lessons of faith that we can have in the Lord Jesus, may we grow in appreciation of the love of our Saviour who truly loves us. The third song that we're going to sing is Deeper in Love. You know, as we seek, as the Lord sought to have a relationship with His Father, God the Father, by waking up early every morning, to be with Him in prayer. May we seek to have a relationship with God too. As we sing our last song, may our hope be that the Lord would draw us closer to Him and that we would be deeper in love. We would grow deeper in love with Him. Let us sing. Thank you for singing our last song. and Thank you, Auntie Odin, for playing the piano. I'd like to pass the time over to Pastor Chris. When I saw the dinner tonight, I know I'm going to have to work very, very hard. <laughs> Last night dinner was already everybody heavy. Tonight one meat. Tonight three meat. He's gonna send you into outer space, <laughs> even further. Okay, you just stand up for a while. Just yeah, just 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 just, just stand up. Just just stand up for a while. Just just wake up for a while. <laughs> yeah, you're you're already. Yeah. Okay, you're all right. Just stretch for a little bit, okay? Yeah, all the cracks and creaks. Yes. Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. Right. It's every evening is a it's a real challenge. It's my battle against the dinner. All right. I'm get, I'm glad you fed well. I really am. You know, if nothing else, you go away from camp, you gain a few kgs. Yeah, you are, wow, a great camp. Wow, the food was good. Wow, at, at least you've been uh, encouraged some way, one way or the other. Okay, wow, uh, tonight we're going to take up a, another passage. You know, these are real wonderful texts here. Okay, wow, well, let's take up James 2, 5 first. Okay. And then you know, some of the young people are wearing their jumper. This is our 10th anniversary special edition jumper that has the shield of faith there, and it says, rich in faith, James 2.5. Okay, and all the little things there, and it all comes from this text. Okay, inspiration, this text. Well, let's read it together. Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world? to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which He promised to those who love Him. Now that is just really wonderful that God has chosen us to be rich in faith. 
Yet and through this faith, we become heirs of the kingdom as He has promised to those who love Him. Okay, well, tonight we're going to look at another verse. Can this faith be seen? Right? If someone were to show, say to you, can you show me your faith? Is that possible? Okay, well, let's take up another text. 2.18, same chapter, this time around, verse 18. Can we see faith? Right? Now, well, let's, we're going to take this one up tonight. Yeah, okay? Now, well, let's read this. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Okay, now there are two things here. There are people who are speaking, and then there is James replying. Okay, there are people who profess faith. I have faith. And so James reply, okay, and they can say, I have faith, but I don't have works. That's okay. Can you have faith? Right? Show me your faith. You have faith. I have works. As if these two things can actually be separated. Now, James, he replies. This is actually his reply. Okay? Someone will say, mean people will profess. Anyone can profess faith. I have faith. Do you have faith in God? Yes, I have faith. Right? That's called profession. And then he replies, show me your faith without your works. And then he says, I will show you, show you my faith by my works. Right? So faith, interesting uh, construction over here. Okay, show me your faith without no works. Okay, what kind of faith is this? Faith, no works, kind. All right. Now, this is James. He says, what does he say here? In the English is interesting. I will show you my faith by my works, right? Okay. He say, he translate this. It's very interesting. He uses a word out of where you get the word exodus. You know? Ek. From my faith, you will see. From, sorry, from my works, you will see my faith. Out of my works, you see this faith. Where are your works of faith? No, I'm not just doing works. From your works, can we see, whoa, the kind of work you're doing, this is a work, but faith is there. I can see faith in your work. That's James' profession of faith. Can we see faith? I will show you. Okay, now, then he defends this. Now, there are people who say, well, I believe in God. Oh, he replies, verse 19, you believe in God? One God, there is one God? You do well. He's a bit sarcastic here. Even the demons believe. As if that's a good profession. Oh, well, I believe there's one God. Is that enough? Great. Demons also believe there's one God, but they do better. They tremble. You don't. Is saying you believe in one God even enough? James' answer is obviously no. Verse 20, But do you not know, O foolish man, that faith without works, this kind of faith, so we're talking about the kind of faith, right? The faith with no works kind, right? Do you not know that faith without works is dead? What kind of faith do you have? A dead faith. Wow, that is pretty strong. And then he says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Now, that's a very interesting phrase. If you're familiar with the book of Romans, chapter 5, 1, the classic text that talks about how we are made righteous before God. The phrase is, we are justified by faith. James did a little wordplay here. 
right? Faith and works together. We're justified by works. Huh? He makes you think. What do you mean justified by works? He offered Isaac his son on the altar, did he not? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? You see, this is what faith does. It works together with works. By faith, work is made perfect. You cannot separate works and faith. Your, if you really have faith, it will affect everything you do, in other words. But if everything you do does not reflect faith, do you even have faith? Now that's his, where he's coming from. Okay? The scripture says, Abraham believed in God and it was accounted for him righteous. And he was called a friend of God. You see, then that a man is justified by works and not faith only. Now, there we go. Verse 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead. Wow, when Daryl was speaking about dead bodies and all that, he literally can say, I see dead people. <laughs> right? And when he say, I'm going to show you the example, I was very scared. <laughs> You're going to see a dead body. It, you know, a body without the spirit, a dead body is... Ugh, not a pretty sight. Right? Dead, lifeless body. Right? Need to embalm, need to put makeup on. Otherwise, it really looks dead. And a lot of Christians really look dead. Yeah, you look lifeless. You have no life. Right? Look at this, this part of it. A body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. What kind of faith do we have? Okay. Now, earlier on, he says, this is what faith was meant to do. Chapter, verse 14, he says to them, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith and does not have works? What does it profit? Faith was meant to profit us. Faith in our life was meant to profit us people around us. That is what faith was supposed to do. Has your faith profited you? Has it? That he says, right? If faith, no work, what does it profit? Can faith save him? In other words, can this kind of faith save you? Answer. What's the answer? Yes or no? No. You have a faith that cannot save you. You have a profession that cannot save you. What good is that? In other words, what is a prophet? What good is it? Absolutely. That's what he's saying, right? Absolutely useless. Tonight, the message is on this faith must be seen in the works. Does our working, the things that we do, can, can faith be seen? If you can't see any faith, you really want to check. Okay? Because can your faith save you? That is the most important question you need to ask. Can this faith save you? Can it profit you? Faith was meant to save you. Faith was meant to profit you. Okay, now tonight we turn to another gospel story. And this is, we're going to see this man's faith. See for yourself what faith is like. Okay, we looked at several stories now. The story of the rich young ruler, the story of blind Bate. Bartimaeus, and tonight we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 8, and we are going to take a look at this faith that the 
the gospel writers recorded that was outstanding. The faith of a centurion. Okay, now, all right, now well, we're going to take two chapters together. You need, not two chapters, sorry, the, both gospels, uh, Mark's uh, version, not Mark, sorry, Matthew's version and then Luke's version to see a full picture of this person. You see his faith. Okay? And I hope you'll be in, inspired to say, well, that is the kind of faith that I would like. Because this man's faith profited not only himself, but someone else. A dear friend of his. And interesting, this dear friend is his servant. Okay, now turn to Matthew chapter 8. And we read in verse 5. All right, this side. This side will do Matthew's version. This side will do Luke's version. You stand by Luke, okay? Luke chapter 7. This one, Matthew 8. Right? You practice listening. Okay, you turn to Luke, then you listen to Matthew. Okay, later on, uh, we just listen. <laughs> okay, Matthew's version. Matthew, you got to get it ready. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5 to 13. All right, let's see how we fare. Ready? Okay, go. Well, we have a commendation by Jesus, which is absolutely amazing. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. The word great is actually not even there. The gospel is writers are saying, I have not found such a faith. It's just literally translated as such a faith. What did Jesus find? Can Jesus find faith in us? And he looked at him and he says, not all, even in all Israel compared, I have not found such a faith in this Roman centurion. Now that's pretty outstanding. Right? We talk about a faith that could save. This one is a faith that not only saved him, but it saved his servant. It profited his servant. It profited a person, someone else. It helped someone else. Can our faith actually help anyone? Will the Lord hear our prayers? and literally respond because such great faith. That's a sobering, challenging, inspiring thought. Okay? Now, 
we have heard a few messages. The first night, we looked at a man, a rich young ruler. He looked very promising. He had everything in life and had no faith. He walked away sad. That is a very sad thing. You have everything, and yet you have nothing. No faith. Last night, we look at the man called blind Bartimaeus. And he had what Jesus said, your faith has saved you. A saving faith. It really helped him, profited him. It saved him. It, saved, it brought restoration to his sight. It brought restoration to physical, spiritual sight. And he was able to follow Jesus. But of course, when he wasn't following Jesus, he ended up sinning against God. He lost his sight. He got given a second chance. Have mercy on me. Is Psalm 51, have mercy on me. Is a cry of repentance. Restore me. When he is restored, he's not going to go back to his old ways. Thank you very much. I'm going to follow Jesus. Never again. Sin almost took my life. It took my sight. This is called saving faith. Now, tonight we're going to look at his, this man's life. And Jesus said, wow, such a faith. Such great faith. Do we have great faith? Not, not what you say, okay? Not what you say. Remember, anyone can say, I have faith. Can it be seen? It's your works. Look at his works. Look at the way he cared. Look at what he did. Now, we don't get to see a lot of his works in Matthew's version. This is why we need Luke's version. Okay, ready guys? We are going to turn to Luke and see a complete story of this man's life. Okay, and what the gospel writers saw in this, what Jesus saw. Okay, all right, chapter 7, verse 1, starting from verse 1 anyway. Okay, here we go. Now. You see a little bit different there. Okay, a few things that stands out. Okay, what people said of him now. Okay, now here is a certain centurion and his servant dear to him. It will tell you something. What this guy is a soldier. Servants, I mean, a soldier with a heart. 
not, not easy to find. In those days, servants are disposable. How do you get a servant? You conquer, you take, this, you take whatever, that's your servant. Why do you care whether this servant live or die? He did. This servant we read was dear to him, sick, right? In Matthew's version, it was very, very traumatized, you know, very afflicted. But it, this version tells you he was about to die. So life in danger. And so we read, then he heard about Jesus. Now, Matthew's version, he went to talk to Jesus, right? This version, he didn't. He sent elders and Jews pleading with Jesus, come heal. He understands protocol. How does he regard Jesus? I'm a Gentile, you know. You are a Jew. I am unclean. I send respectable elders and Jews, you know, please plead to help me. Okay, look at look what he says. Now, the Jews that came said to Jesus, they begged Jesus, begged him earnestly and said, this one is deserving. Now, here's the difference. What did he say about himself? I am unworthy that you should come. What other people say of him? He is deserving. He is worthy, in other words. Please help him. He is worthy. You know what he's done? He has, look what he's done. He loves our nation, Israel. This is a Roman centurion. And he loved the nation of Israel. Why are you going to love another person's, other people's nation for? What is it? He built us, us a synagogue. Wow. He must be a rich centurion, right? To build a synagogue. He's not. Soldiers don't get paid much. Who's that? Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah, please attend to Amber. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We, we have people attending to her. She's not feeling well. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's try and concentrate. We, we've got mum there. We've got a few committee members there already. Okay? The rich ones are in Rome. They are centurions that are appointed by Caesar because you are from a rich family. This is called, you know, rank by who you know. And there are those who earn their stripes on the field. This one is one who earned his stripes on the field. He has soldiers under them. He's not a rich man, as a lot of people think. Yes, if a rich man build a synagogue, okay, yeah, he's got much. But when you are a not very well paid, because you, there are many centurions, a centurion is just a captain. You're not a commander. You're just a captain. Soldiers in Rome don't get paid much. They have many captains. This one is in Capernaum, meaning outposts. You're just in one of the outposts to make sure these are all your battle-ready centurions because just in case a rebellion comes, don't send those like, no, never seen war before one. Let them stay in Rome. Send those one that are fierce. Send those one who have gone into battle. That's why he can have servants. It's not because they are, they are free. Conquer the land, you get a lot of servants. Why do you build a synagogue? You know, here is the Jewish people. Wow, happy like anything. Thanks. Thank you very much. Build us at the synagogue. You can rally your soldiers. Literally build it. Let's build this synagogue. What is it that he saw in the God of Israel? He had faith. It this is why Jesus said, wow, such a faith. Here is a non-Israelite. He did not have the privilege of, of having the scriptures available. The Jews did. 
right? Today, it is our privilege to have the Scriptures. The problem is we take it for granted. We don't even read it. We are just like Israel. You have it available, but is your faith great? You should. That's why Jesus made the comparison. I have not found, not even in Israel, if any people should have great faith, it should be Israel. It was a slap to their face. If there are anybody that should have great faith, it should be people who are at church. They have access to Bibles, right? You're Christians, right? Where's your faith? Where's the great faith? And here is one. He did not have the privilege because they were not allowed in the synagogue. He built it and not allowed to go in. No Gentile is allowed to step in a synagogue. They will, it, will be, it will be violent. He built a synagogue for them not to even step in. You see why they said this man is deserving? You see now, works of faith, right? He's not a rich man. His centurion is really hard-earned through war. He earned it. He was a man of valor. And yet, he was able to give. And yet, he cared. This is the difference. Well, you take a look at what he says in Jesus. Now, this is really remarkable. Jesus went with them. Okay, now, remember, here is Jesus. He sends who? Jews, elders. Plead with Jesus to help his servant. Heal his, not him, you know. Heal his servant. This is doing for someone else, not for yourself. And so Jesus agreed going, walking towards. Like, that's what it says. Jesus went with them. Okay? And when he was ready, not far from the house, the centurion, this time around, sent his friends. Okay? He sent his friends saying to him, Well, I didn't ask you to come. Lord, do not trouble yourself. What? Lord? The word Lord is only addressed to the emperor of Rome. For a centurion to call anyone else Lord, if any, he get reported, he'll be in serious trouble for treason. He called Jesus Lord. Don't trouble yourself. Right? I am not worthy that you should even enter my roof. How do you see Jesus? Look at this man's regard for who Jesus is. The Jews say, He is worthy. Well, he's done so many good stuff. He is a good man. He is a man honourable. He loved our nation. He built us a synagogue. He is deserving. That's what they said about him. What does he say about himself? I am not worthy. So unworthy that don't you, to, for you to even come to my house. Right? Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. That's what I mean. Send the friends, please pass, please pass Jesus this message. I am not worthy to even talk to him because I'm a man of war. I've committed many sins. I have killed. So conscious of his sins. So conscious of his unworthiness to come to Jesus. You know, holy men, please, please go to Jesus. Uh, the, the Jews, the elders, you are holy. Could you please plead on behalf of me? My friends, please, me, I'm a sinful man. 
I'm not worthy. Please help my servant. But please help my servant, I, I beg you. For a soldier, a man of valor, a person who's earned his stripes in the battlefield, respected by his soldiers, to plead with Jesus. This is how he saw himself. He says, therefore, I did not even think myself. I don't even think myself worthy. I, I don't trouble. Please, I am not worthy. I don't even think myself worthy. The problem today is we think ourselves very worthy. Well, how come you didn't choose me? We are so worthy. We come in before God. We enter into as if the Lord owes us. We pray. Wow, so worthy. Wow. Are you even conscious of your sins? This man was. And he looked at himself and he says, I don't even think myself worthy to come to you. I am not worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. You want to talk about faith? What does he see in Jesus? He sees Jesus as holy. As, and he sees himself unworthy. He sees Jesus as Lord he sees himself. He's not even think he can even approach Jesus. Sinful. He sees Jesus. All you need to do, Lord, is just say one word. Heal. And it will be done. He understands power. He understands authority. Look at this. I am a man. I am but a man. You are the Lord. I am just a man. A man placed under authority. He's not a top person. He's a humble person. He's not a person that is in charge of. He's also a person under authority. That's what he's saying. I have soldiers under me. Yes, there are others under me. And I say, one, go, he goes. To another, come, he comes. And my servant, and to my servant, do this, he does. You know what he is saying to Jesus? I'm under your authority. You just say the word. Such is your power. Such is your authority. You just say the word, and it's done. Wow, that is really sad. We talk about blind Bartimaeus, is it? Blind Bartimaeus. He recognized Jesus. This man recognized Jesus. You want to know what faith, what, what we talk about, why Jesus said such great faith. And everybody feels they're so worthy. Right? The Pharisees feel they're worthy. Even the disciples feel they walk with Jesus every day and they take him for granted. This man doesn't take anything for granted. Such great faith. Take a look at this, right? And he says, and then Jesus turned around and said, marveled at him, turned around said to the crowd that follow him, you want to learn, your disciples, you want to learn? You want to learn what great faith looks like? Points, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. What do we see in our faith? Right? We have been learning about faith. What is this faith? Okay. Can you see this faith? Can we, like, you, you trace the story, find the link. 
Look at that. Can we recognize who Jesus truly is? How real is this? How real is this faith? Now, go on further. How rich is this faith? Does our faith bring about a reward? Promise to those who love Him. One, two, three, four. At least. What was granted? Done. Let it be done. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has saved you. Reward. Those who seek diligently, done. Right? Centurion said the same thing. Go. Your servant is well. Can, can we actually see this faith? Right? Can we see this? Is it a faith that is great? Can our faith actually help anyone? Right? Tonight, I, I hope we, can, we are able to see faith because it should be, be seen from the works faith. That's what James is saying. Okay? I will show you my faith by my works. What did Jesus see in this centurion? His works. Right? He saw his works. From his works, faith. Look at how he cared. He cared for a servant. I mean, a servant. You can get rid of them, just get another one. They're free. They come free. Sick, die, ah, get a new one. No, this one, they're dear to me. Right? This is why he's been faithful to me. Look at how he cares. What do you see? Faith. Look how he gave, how he loved the people of God. Do we know how to love the people of God? He's not a rich man. A lot of people think the centurion's a rich man. He's not a rich man. The rich ones are in Rome. The ones in Capernaum are not rich ones. When a rich person gives, right, Mark Zuckerberg, he gives by the millions. Sure, of course, he's got billions. But for a person that is not rich, sure he's got an average salary. He's just another poor soldier under orders from Rome. And he built a synagogue in his expense. He would have got his men. They would have put every effort in, paid for the thing. He built it. It was attributed to him. That is impressive. What have we built? What have we contributed at all? See, we talk about what, what actual faith really is. This is a faith, such a faith. Do we have such a faith? How come the Jews didn't build their own synagogue? I also wondered. This is your synagogue and you didn't build. This is a place of your place of worship. They didn't have the faith to build. It is for them to use and they don't contribute. And here is a person who is not even going to use the place and he builds it and lets them use it. And, and go ahead. Right? When you give the lunch, must you have the biggest share? When I give the lunch, sometimes I don't even eat. Go ahead. Eat. 
eat your three meats and four vegetables. Be happy and sleepy. <laughs> and switch on the aircon, please. <laughs> All right? He goes, wow, this is perfect recipe. All right? Because there's stuffy room in here. Right? Aircon is not working. Right? We are all eating a full meal. <sighs> okay? Yeah, we need some aircon on. Right? You see, this is different. You give and you don't even use the place. A lot of people give. Typical, give, I must have the biggest cut. After all, I gave. Is that faith? Nah, that's not. That's just being human. You're just your average human being. Is it impressive? No, not at all. Right? You're just normal. You want to see something different? Look at the centurion. He built a synagogue he didn't use. The Jews should be the one building their own synagogue. Right? This is your synagogue. This is your place of worship. This is your church. You're the one who are the beneficiaries. Well, no, I cannot, you know. I, I got to support my donkey. You know, I got a daughter going, growing up. Got to get married. You know, I've got, I've got so many commitments. I've got this. I'm sure you will always have something. You will always have a commitment. And here is a man. He doesn't have much either. And he built them a synagogue. He sees them. He looks at them. You must have a place of worship. You cannot have no place of worship. This was how the churches, in other churches in India start. This is a place of worship. Well, let's try to build. That's what we are told. That's how Bethel was built. Right? If not, we will still be in Nanga Bush. <laughs> Isn't it? We will still be, you think, so nice. Eat, well, all eat nice, we will be eating possum and kangaroo. Of course not. Right? Wake up five in the morning. Oh, cut firewood. We have a little stove there to keep the place warm. When the wind, nice, nice shot. It's so hot in here. We should open some window. Wow, so cold outside. The, this place we had, how come? I can see through you. Know, to the outside. Poor one of our committee members woke up. How come something drip on me? It's raining. It wasn't rain. It was a possum. <laughs> Wrong place to do the toilet. <laughs> it was one was we gone inside. You know, is himself or herself, don't know who this thing is, in the wrong place. We had to live with the creatures. Now we're in comfort. Right? You've got dorms, divide nicely. Wow, we are so comfortable, we are sleepy. Do we even pause for a moment? Wow, thank God. You know, you know what this should create in us? Great faith. Oh, where's the great faith? That is why Jesus said, I have not, not in all Israel. Israel, you have taken so much for granted. God has provided for them again and again and again and again. He has sent prophets after prophets after prophets. He even sent the greatest of all his own son. Where's your faith? What else do you want? You want a message? I send a messenger. I've been sending messengers to you. After a while, like what Jesus said, ears are dull of heart, dull of hearing, eyes closed, ears hardened. In other words, they've taken it for granted. Yeah, God's message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is speaking to us. Where once upon a time, 
when 70 years they did not have a word from God because they were in Babylon. When they returned, when the scriptures was read, they stood up. For hours the whole day, they stood up, they listened to the word of God and they wept. We have missed this. We have missed this. We have taken God for granted. And we have suffered 70 years. We want to chase idols. We want to the, the, the worship other gods. They saw idols for 70 years until they were so sick. They wept by the rivers of Babylon. And that's where you get the song. By the rivers of Babylon. <laughs> right? That, that is actually a biblical song. It's actually a sad song. Sad to say pop, pop group made it. Uh, you, know, a, you know, I heard that song. I thought, wow, you know, that was it. I would like that song. I didn't know when I read, hey, by the rivers of Babylon. It's a biblical, they sang sad songs. The kings asked them, come, sing me a song. You know, that's how they torture these people. You, they take them as refugees. Sing us your song. Sing us a happy song. I'm so sad you make me want to sing a happy song. That's how they humiliate them. And they sang. And they sang the songs they remember of Israel, of their home. They took God for granted. This is not a lesson for Israel to learn to not take this for granted. We can take faith for granted, you know. We can take God for granted. We can take so much for granted. They disregarded the Word of God. And when they returned, they rebuilt, they had nothing. You know, they had com literally nothing. No temple, nothing. No wall to protect them. Anytime they can be invaded, they only had two things. One is the Word of God. Two is their faith in the Word of God. That's their connection with God. And that's all they had. These were the same things that was given to them at first. And they took it for granted. They took their faith for granted. They did not treasure their faith. They took the word of God for granted. They disregarded it. And they suffered 70 years. The very judgment God will say, it will come. It will come. See, after a while, it falls on deaf ears. Yeah, 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 it will come, it will come. You know, the audacity... Some even said, let it come. Quickly let it come, let it go. Just get it over with. Right. That became the attitude. Let it come, and it did come. Northern Kingdom fell. Invaded. Oh, that's just bad luck, maybe, you know. But the Southern Kingdom, we are strong. We will not fall. We got the backing of Egypt. Yeah, Egypt just got sacked. And the Assyrians came and sacked them too. The Babylonians came and took everything. Everything. They lost the temple. They had no place of worship. They only had one thing, their faith in God. That was the, this is where the book of Daniel has only had faith. It's only had faith. What must God take away from us to realize what is the most important thing? Does, must He take? Because if He gives, you take for granted. You take for granted. Okay, you don't want it. Then I will strip everything away. Here is a centurion who did not have all the privileges he did not take for granted this thing called faith. Matthew's version is beautiful. The East and the West is a reference to Jesus is really encouraging his heart. He has, remember, I am not worthy. I'm not worthy, right? 
Jesus said, you will sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. From the east and the west, all men who believe like you have, they will sit with people of faith like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. Not only can you enter a synagogue, you will sit in the kingdom of God. Has God not chosen the poor of this world, centurion, to be rich in faith, to be heirs of the kingdom? This is promise to those who love Him. That's what James meant. This is perfectly illustrated in the life of the centurion. He was that poor man. Please don't think he's a rich man. Soldiers are not paid very much at all. But what did he have? A faith that was rich. Such great faith. In other words, such a faith. You want to see a rich faith? This is a rich faith. He had a rich faith. Of all the people, he had a rich faith. Do we have a rich faith? We have so many things. We have a beautiful church. We have, uh, I don't know, how many Bibles do you have? I have a lot, several. We have so many, access to so many things. So many ways to build up a faith that would shine for God, that will be rich. And yet, where is the rich faith? We have unbelief. We have like the, we have no faith. We have mm, pretty meek. Don't know whether real faith. I have faith. No works. I have as, that's all you could say. I believe there is one God and you think that could save you. And James has to tell them, even the demons believe. Are the demons saved? Of course they're not. You, you see this account? Was to help Israel, was to help people, all people see. Don't take faith for granted. Don't take the Word of God for granted. Don't take God for granted. We can take so much for granted. How much do we treasure this faith? This man did because it saved, it's, it's going to save him. Good thing he had this thing called faith and it saved him. It is the second last night. Tomorrow we finish. One more message. I'll let you know what I'm going to speak on tomorrow. But it's going to round off everything. But first, let's think about this. Check this faith. If we take God for granted, we can repeat Israel. We really can. What God gives, God can take. Of course He can. To those who have, more will be given. To those who don't, whatever you have, it will be taken. You don't know how to appreciate it, it will be taken away. You don't appreciate the ability to understand the Scriptures, that will be taken away. You don't appreciate faith, that faith will never be rich. Let's learn from history. Israel's history, of all Israel, that's why Israel was remembered. It was meant to stir them up and say, don't forget what happened. And now let's look at this person's faith. Right? Unworthy. That's how we should come to the Lord, really unworthy. We look at our sins, we feel worthy. No. It's not... Okay, only when I'm really good, I'm doing everything well, then I come to God. It's not. You come. You come to the Lord. Unworthiness. You recognize who Jesus is. You recognize His authority. You recognize His power. You recognize He is Lord. You recognize with one word He can heal. Lord, Save me. Can you heal in one word? Would you believe it? He did. 
That's why Jesus said to him, Go, your servant lives because of your believing your faith. Can we have faith? Israel didn't have faith. Let's have this faith. Okay, well, let's pray together. Our Father, we pray as we listen to another challenging word tonight. It must stir up faith. We pray that we would not take for granted the many things you've already given to us to help us to find this faith. We have examples. We have your word. How can we not treasure all the things that you have given to us? May we not even take this faith for granted. We've seen this so many years, your provision, your power, your protection. And yet, faith is still found wanting. So we ask for grace and mercy once again. Please hear this, our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.